Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk football briefly. Um, National Football League. Peyton Manning. According to reports, he's working out as if he's coming back. Now, I took a lot of heat. I made a video a while back here where I said, in the playoffs, fade Peyton Manning. I encourage everyone to just Google that video, Dwyer Peyton Manning, and look at the comments in the comment section to that video. Now, people know it's my belief that the way to make money is by uh, figuring out the difference between public opinion and reality, right? In my opinion, it's over for Peyton Manning. Right? Understand whether we're talking about Peyton Manning with a thigh injury or without a thigh injury, Manning lacks the arm strength these days to make the throws needed to win games. Understand, in his prime, and when I say games, I mean playoff games, in his prime, Peyton Manning wasn't that good a playoff quarterback. He's a guy who relies on a lot of audibles, a lot of sleight of hand, and stuff like that. He's a passer. Well, understand, if he comes back next year, he would be the oldest starting quarterback in the league, and understand that Peyton Manning never had the gun that guys like Brett Favre had. You really can't compare Peyton Manning to other older quarterbacks from years past, right? So... We've reached the point in Peyton Manning's career where his arm, as Greg Cosell used to say, when Manning was healthy, is average to below average. Right? He can't make the throws defenses like the Colts, who got torched for 45 points by the New England Patriots. Think about that. Defenses like the Colts are able to slow him down down. So, to the gamblers out there, let me say this, right? Let's hope Peyton Manning comes back. Because what will happen is Peyton Manning will have a good September, as he always does. He'll look good the first half of the year. Then I believe his body is going to start to betray him, right? On a futures prop, the Denver Broncos are going to suck up a lot of the action, right? Weren't they a high seed in the AFC just last year. Didn't they have a home game against the Colts? The year before that, weren't they the AFC champions? Didn't they play in the Super Bowl? I believe that's what fans will be betting on. Those teams. Not the current team with a new head coach and a new defensive coordinator. Right? So... I believe in the upcoming football season, football 2015, I think you need to fade Peyton Manning, right? If he comes back, let's feel grateful that he's coming back. Because what that'll do is that'll make the odds on teams with more realistic chances of winning the AFC next year, let's say the Pittsburgh Steelers with a healthy Levy and Bell, right? Is there a better quarterback-wide receiver combination in the entire league than Ben Roethlisberger, multiple Super Bowl winner, and Antonio Brown? I would encourage you to look at his numbers. Right? Also, a team like Denver is going to drain odds away from the Baltimore Ravens. Understand, the Ravens played the Patriots tough. The Patriots had to do things like pretend... Shane Vereen was an offensive lineman. Joe Flacco and John Harbaugh had Bill Belichick on the ropes. Right? Joe Flacco's won a ring. He's in his prime with a much stronger arm than Peyton Manning. Right? And so my point to you is simply this. Understand an overrated team when you see one. The Denver Broncos right now are overrated. We'll see who they sign, but I don't believe that Peyton Manning, a quarterback who isn't elite in the postseason, 
right? Just look at the numbers, right? I don't believe that Peyton Manning can deliver an AFC title for Denver. Let me point out, too, that there's a built-in media bias toward Peyton Manning because, of course, Peyton Manning is a great guy, right? He's a guy who you could have as a corporate pitch man, right? He can sell you things like pizza and insurance, right? We also like his family, right? Brother Eli has two rings. Archie Manning was a top three pick in the NFL draft, right? The Mannings are a great you know, family of ambassadors for the National Football League. But understand, if you're betting money, you need to know Peyton Manning's lack of success in the playoffs. You need to realize that he lost the first game they played in the playoffs, right, um, in Denver against Joe Flacco. That was Manning's first year there, right? He then gets to the Super Bowl, gets blown out. One of the dynamics of that Super Bowl was the fact that it was in an outdoor stadium, right, in the Northeast. But Peyton Manning had problems in that Super Bowl. He comes back, loses another home game. Think about it. As a Denver Bronco, this guy has already lost two home playoff games, right? He loses to Andrew Locke. Think about it. Right? So, just keep an eye on Peyton Manning. Understand, I believe gamblers understand, hey, great guy, uh, we can get nostalgic, but if we're making a bet today, right, your futures money shouldn't be on the Denver Broncos unless it's a hedge position. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about Marshawn Lynch. Now, here's a young man in his late 20s. What most of the country doesn't seem to realize is that he attended the University of California at Berkeley. Now let me say this, I know the East Coast people think that there's no world outside of the Ivy League, but understand that here out West, Cal Berkeley is one of the elite institutions of higher learning, right? Understand the guys who are at Cal Berkeley are serious students, right? Aaron Rodgers, is a Cal Berkeley guy, right? Marshawn Lynch is a smart guy, right? He doesn't want to talk to the press. Really, that should be his choice. But don't confuse him for a guy who isn't very conscious, doesn't know what he's doing. I can tell you, I get bored listening to corporate pitchmen giving interviews using cliches like oh I just want to give a hundred percent oh our opponents are tough oh I'm just glad to be here you know I'm someone who actually appreciates an athlete who actually has you know a non-corporate point of view right Marshawn Lynch is thought out he's cerebral right he does things deliberately, right? He questions the power structure of the National Football League. I've listened to Marshawn Lynch interviews where he's very sharp. He's very insightful, right? Let me say this. He's also very involved in things away from the football field. He's a big philanthropist. He's very much into community service and charity. Understand, there's a Marshawn Lynch that exists off the football field. That's socially conscious, right? It's not all Skittles and Beast Mode. Now, he's in his late 20s, and apparently, according to reports, he's contemplating walking away from the game. Right now, let me say this. It's his decision. I'm not encouraging him to do so or trying to talk him out of doing so. All I'm saying is simply this. For those of you who feel that he has to take the money and has to resign in the NFL because backs just don't walk away in their late 20s, right? My point to you is that Marshawn Lynch is already 
a multimillionaire. Folks, he made millions of dollars just last year alone, and he had a prior career. Right? According to reports, Marshawn Lynch is very well off. Let's face it, too. Marshawn Lynch can always fall back on his Berkeley degree. Right? I'm telling you again, Berkeley is one of these elite institutions. Right? If I were Marshawn Lynch, the person I'd be thinking about right now is Tony Dorsett. Right? Tony played for a very popular Dallas Cowboy franchise. At the time, they were viewed as America's team. Understand the way the real world operates. Right? The ownership group of those Dallas Cowboys from the 1970s no longer owns the Cowboys. Right? The old employer has moved on. Maybe the team name, the logo uh, still exists, but the Cowboys don't even play in the same stadium where Tony Dorsett played. Right? Now, I'm sure, as with Marshawn Lynch today, at that time you had a lot of people around Tony Dorsett telling him how great he is. Telling him how he needed to keep on playing as a Dallas Cowboy. Right? Just to understand, Tony Dorsett now at 60 has CTE. He has degenerative brain injury. Tony's worried about his future. Tony, by his own admission, sometimes forgets things that should be second nature to him. Right? His favorite eating spots. Sometimes Tony forgets how to get there. Sometimes when Tony's on the way there, he forgets where he's going. Right? Understand, the NFL takes a toll on you. Physically. Right? We're finding out now that there were risks involved. In fact, there are risks involved in playing football that the league itself denied before Roger Goodell took over as commissioner. In other words, the league was recently denying the link between CTE and playing football. The league itself was denying, right, that playing football increased your incidence of brain injury and things like depression. And so the point is simply this. Take Tony Dorsett, right, the world's moved on from the Dallas Cowboys of the 1970s, right? Maybe occasionally they have player reunions, but who's Dorsett going to turn to with his problems, right? Even the ownership of the team is different than when Tony Dorsett played. In other words, players have to look out for themselves. Now, Marshawn Lynch has a very physical running style, doesn't he? Right? He takes a lot of punishment. He runs over guys. Now, maybe those impacts on the body don't really show themselves when you're in your 20s, when you're in your physical prime. But I hope Marshawn looks at just Hall of Fame quarterbacks, right? The knees of John Elway. A guy who came in the league is one of the better athletes the league had seen at quarterback. Right? The knees of Dan Marino. The knees of Joe Namath. Should I be saying knees or artificial knees? Right? Understand it's as athletes get older. It's as Tony Dorsett got older. It's as Junior Seau got older that the punishment that these guys went through in their 20s started to impact their everyday lives. So let me say this. Just like guys on Wall Street will walk away, right? Don't we call it early retirement? Will walk away when they're at the height of their game financially. They've made some deals. They've sold a company. They've made a windfall. Many people will walk away at that point. They've had a good run. They've felt grateful for what they've accomplished. 
but they have other things on their bucket list that they want to pursue. So if I'm Marshawn Lynch, I would ask myself, how much money would Tony Dorsett pay right now to not have CTE? To not have a degenerative brain injury that's robbing him of his memories? How much money if he had it? $10 million? If you believe the number is as high as $10 million, and I would say, quite frankly, folks would pay everything they have to avoid having an injury that deprives them of their ability to enjoy life. Right? If Marshawn knows that he personally would pay whatever money the Seahawks are offering him to re-sign, if he knows that in his mind, then he needs to consider that in determining whether or not he wants to come back to the team. Let me say this too, and it's the ultimate compliment to him. You had one of the biggest plays in NFL history take place in the recent Super Bowl. Right? That interception down at the one-yard line. That play will live in infamy. We're going to be talking about that play for several years, just like we talk about, even today, the immaculate reception involving Franco Harris. Understand that football fans feel so highly of Marshawn Lynch, who I believe is a future Hall of Famer, that even though Marshawn Lynch didn't get the ball on that last play, He's an integral part of the play, isn't he? Because the people who believe that the Seahawks made a mistake in calling a pass play invariably say that they had the best, if not one of the very best, running backs in the National Football League, Marshawn Lynch in their backfield, and they should have handed the ball off to him. Understand, 15, 20, 25 years from now, when we talk about that play, Marshawn Lynch is going to be one of the people that reporters will want to interview. Right? That play will be a gateway for us to remember how dominant Marshawn Lynch was. And understand, Marshawn Lynch in that Super Bowl rushed for over 100 yards. In other words, the fact that he'd be walking away on top, so to speak, is self-evident, right on top of his craft. I understand the team didn't win the game, but understand there's a sentiment out there that had they handed the ball off to Marshawn Lynch, they would have. Understand that sentiment is even shared by New England Patriot running back Shane Vereen. Right, so if Marshawn is looking at opportune times to leave the sport, if he's tired of the politics within the sport, the fact that the sport won't even allow him after games to just quietly go about his business and reflect on the game, he has to always expose himself to the media and always has to answer media questions. If Marshawn Lynch is tired of being fine, or thanking the media but trying to politely decline those interactions. Or fined for wanting to wear gold pleated spikes on the field. Right? If Marshawn is just tired and if the game is no longer big fun for him. And if he has any health concerns. If he feels healthy now. And he feels that there's a risk going forward. Right? As O.J. Simpson once said to Charlie Ward, when Charlie Ward won the Heisman, O.J. said, it's a good thing that you weren't a running back. Because looking around here, they're at the Heisman Award ceremony, there are a lot of running backs with limbs. If Marshawn Lynch feels that by staying in the game, he's putting himself at risk physically, then I have absolutely no beef. In fact, I have no beef regardless and whether Marshawn Lynch decides for his own quality of life and for his own reasons, he's going to walk away from the sport right now. Let me point out too, I'm sure there's going to be some sentiment that Marshawn Lynch is being selfish if he walks away from the team. 
If you're one of these people who believes that an athlete's being selfish when that athlete retires from a sport for personal reasons, then you aren't aware of the fact that sports are for-profit businesses, right? Forget their legal tax status. Sports are for-profit businesses, and the reason why these men own teams is to make money, right? The profit motive is why we have sports. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you disagree with anything I've said in this video, if you believe that Peyton Manning is still a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, right, who can make all the throws, all the deep throws, right, if you believe that Marshawn Lynch should continue playing, should sign a new deal with the Seahawks, and you know the way these new deals work. They'll give him some money, and then they'll say, hey, you owe us at least a couple seasons. If you don't play two seasons, you owe us back some of the money, right? If you feel Marshawn Lynch has to sign a deal and can't follow the road traveled by Robert Smith, for example, and walking away from the sport at 28, then let me hear from you. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let's discuss it. Thanks for stopping by.